Hi everyone. Welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilovepathology.com. In continuation with the series on ischemic heart disease, this is the part 3 of ischemic heart disease series where we were discussing about myocardial infarction, right? In the earlier session, I had discussed in detail about the etiopathogenesis of myocardial infarction. In this session, let's learn in detail about the gross and the microscopic features of myocardial infarction. Before we understand exactly what happens in the myocardium, let us see some general features and these are all, nearly all transmural infarcts involve a portion of the left ventricle including the free wall and the ventricular septum. That's the free wall and this will be the ventricular septum. That's one concept. Another is infarcts, you know, the complete infarcts, the transmural infarcts covers almost the entire perfusion zone except a very narrow subendocardial rim. So, that will be around, you know, 0.1 mm. So, that will be spared and that's because this endocardium is preserved by the diffusion of oxygen or nutrients from the blood within the chambers. Now, let's look into the arterial involvement and the associated infarct sites. So, 40 to 50 percent of the cases are uh, in or due to left anterior descending artery obstruction and the 30 to 40 percent are due to right coronary arterial obstruction causes and the remaining is by obstruction of the left circumflex arteries. When you have an obstruction in the left anterior descending artery, the infarct will be seen in the anterior left ventricular wall and that's usually at the apex. It also involves the anterior ventricular septum and the apex circumferentially, right? So, this is the infarct site when there is involvement of left anterior descending coronary artery. Now, when the right coronary artery is involved, the infarct site includes either inferior or posterior left ventricular wall posterior part of the ventricular septum and inferior or posterior right ventricular free wall in some cases not really not necessarily in all the cases in some of these cases right ventricular free wall is also involved when there is involvement of the left circumflex artery it involves only the lateral left ventricular wall except the apex so, this is about the arterial involvement and the associated infarct sites. The other features which can include are infarcts may also arise from lesions in the left main coronary artery. The infarct can also arise due to obstruction of the diagonal branches of the left anterior descending artery, not the main branch, the diagonal branches of the left anterior descending artery or it could be due to obstruction involving the marginal branches of the left circumflex arteries. Remember, isolated right ventricular infarcts are extremely rare. It counts for around 1 to 3 percent of cases. Now, let's get into the most important part of the morphological features of myocardial infarction. We will see the sequence of events starting from 0 to half an hour. What really happens at the first half an hour of myocardial infarction or the first half an hour after the obstruction. Grossly, absolutely no changes. You, know, you cannot identify that there was an there was, there was an obstruction of any of these arteries. Microscopically also, you will not find any changes. All changes, if at all, is found on electron microscopy where you find relaxation of the myofibrils. There can be glycogen loss or, or there can be mitochondrial swelling right that's that's the feature of reversible injury right so this is what you find in the first half an hour of infarction now from half an hour to four hours grossly again you will not find any identifiable lesions microscopically sometimes you can find a bit of waviness of the myocardial fibers on electron microscopy you find sarcolimal disruption and you also find mitochondrial amorphous densities. This is what you find in first four hours. Now, but then at around two to three hours, you still can identify that there could be area of necrosis. Okay, and that's identified by special techniques where you immerse the tissue slices 
in a solution called triphenyl tetrazoleum chloride solution what happens when the heart is immersed in this solution see the normal non infected area it preserves lactate dehydrogenase activity okay and because of the lactate dehydrogenase activity which is preserved this acts with the triphenyl tetrazoleum and imparts a brick red color if you find a brick red color after you immerse tissue slice in this solution that means this part is normal whereas in the case of infarcted myocardium where the myocardium myocardial cells dies right once the myocardial cells dies the dehydrogenase activity is not there in these myocardial fibers because the dehydrogenase would have leaked out and that's why the color is not there so it is unstained area or a pale zone so when there is immersion of these tissue slices if you find a pale zone and that pale zone is actually the area of infarct this is how you identify the infarct area by means of special techniques as early as in 2 to 3 hours this will be of utmost useful whenever you are evaluating a case of suspected myocardial infarction during autopsies let us see what really happens at 4 to 12 hours of the infarct grossly you can find occasionally mottling with some some amount of reddish discoloration that's because of hemorrhage into the area and microscopically you find features of early coagulative necrosis so you know that we had discussed in detail about what really happens in coagulative necrosis right the cytoplasm assumes eosinophilia i mean it becomes more pink in color and the nuclei becomes more paler so that's what feature you find in early coagulative necrosis and these these darker bands are basically the contraction bands in the ischemic myocardium now 12 to 24 hours what happens in this period is you find the mottling is increased microscopically you find well formed coagulative necrosis area cytoplasm is more pinker densely eosinophilic and then the nuclei is slightly paler in color sometimes you also find in the process of death the nuclei becomes pyknotic okay remember karyolysis karyorexis and gnosis are the features of nuclei in a dead cell right so you find pyknotic nuclei myocyte hyperhyos eosinophilia and you find these marginal contraction band necrosis it assumes more darkly or densely pink or eosinophilic in color and then you find early neutrophilic infiltrate you have hemorrhage you have early neutrophilic infiltrate you know the first cells first set of cells which comes in acute inflammation is neutrophils right so you find these neutrophilic infiltrates now after one day three days one to three days grossly you find mottling which is already there and then in the center of the infarct area you find yellowish tan center infarct center that's yellowish tan area microscopically very well formed coagulative necrosis you find no nuclei the nuclei is gone there is loss of nuclei and then the interstitial infiltrate now becomes very much you know it's overwhelmed with lots and lots of neutrophils that's what happens in one to three days this particular stage is very important because at this stage even at this stage if there is no intervention there is risk of pericarditis as well three to seven days the border of the infarct area is hyperemic the central area becomes more yellow tan and it softens so it softens here and then beginning of disintegration of the dead myofibers so myofibers once they are in coagulative you know that coagulative necrosis is a form of cell death right so once they are dead the disintegration also happens the neutrophils also start dying once their function is over and then the macrophages appear and these tries to these try to phagocytose those dead cells it could be neutrophils or the myocytes and this macrophage activity is very much active in the border of the infarct so that's in three to seven days around 7 to 10 days the infarct is maximally yellow tan very very soft the surrounding margins are actually depressed and red tan and that's because of the formation of granulation tissue at the margins okay by now you find well developed phagocytosis you find a very classically marginal you know presence of granulation tissue where you find proliferating new leaky capillaries 
10 to 14 days, you know, it's around 2 weeks, what happens? There is red-gray area, breast infarct borders, the yellowish in the center is still there. Okay, and now microscopically you find a very well established granulation tissue. Also, you find early evidence of collagen deposition. You know that granulation tissue involves angiogenesis and fibrogenesis, right? So, the fibroblasts also proliferate and it also starts synthesizing collagen. Okay, that's where you find early collagen deposition. That's around 2 weeks, 10 days to 14 days. Now, beyond 2 weeks. To eight weeks, what happens is that the scar gets formed. Okay, it's a gray white scar, and the scar progressively forms from the periphery towards the center. Initially, the scar is well formed in the periphery, gradually, it moves towards the core of the infarct. Microscopically, the collagen deposition is increased, cellularity comes down. And more than eight weeks or more than two months, the infarct is complete, the scarring is complete. Microscopically, what you see is dense collagenous scar. Beyond two months, whether it is three months, whether it is three years or whether it is ten years, you cannot differentiate. It all looks the same. You see only dense collagenous scar. So, this is quickly understanding the gross features. Okay, no features in the first four hours. Then you find dark mottling and yellow tan center in 1 to 3 days. There is hyperemic border in 3 to 7 days and in 7 to 10 days. That's because there is formation of granulation tissue. The scar starts appearing at the periphery and gradually moves towards the center or core of the infarct. Finally, the scarring is complete at around 2 months of infarct age. Microscopically, very simple. You can find early variable waviness. You find coagulative necrosis at 4 to 12 hours. 12 to 24 hours, very classical coagulative necrosis. You find contraction band necrosis as well and early neutrophilic infiltrate. More neutrophils in 1 to 3 days and then macrophages starts appearing at around 3 to 7 days. And finally, there is scar and you know, granulation tissue formation at around 7 to 10 days. Collagen starts appearing, cellularity starts decreasing and finally, there is formation of dense collagenous scar. Now, you might ask me a question. Why is that we need to understand the gross and microscopic changes in myocardial infarction? Is it really important clinically? Because we don't get to do a you know, heart biopsy to diagnose myocardial infarction, right? I will talk about diagnosis you know, in subsequent sessions, but we don't do a biopsy of the heart to diagnose myocardial infarction. So, why do we need to learn in detail like this? The reason is, see, this is a very predictable histological changes or the gross features. And this predictability is very important in understanding the time since death. Each stage, you know, correlates with clinical complications. For example, if you find more and more neutrophils, say in one to three days, if it is not intervened, and that's when there is a risk of pericarditis. If you have lots and lots of macrophages, that's around three to five and seven to ten days, there is softening of the myocardium and there is a risk of the ventricular wall itself rupturing. Right? So, the rupture risk is very much high. That's why it's very important for us to understand what are the sequence of events after the obstruction of coronary blood vessels. Okay, So, it helps us in understanding the disease process, the complications as well as outcomes. More importantly, to understand or to know the time since death, particularly in case of suspected myocardial infarctions when you are dealing autopsies. Sometimes what really happens is that, you know, when you treat myocardial infarction, it can make things worse and that is called ischemia reperfusion injury. And this is the topic for my next session. Stay tuned. So, we have learnt in detail about the gross and microscopic findings. Please note that this is a very important topic for all of you guys over there, for all of you students over there. Over there. Understand in detail. The concepts are very much simpler if you're, if you're, if you're good in understanding the cellular injury and then the progress of necrotic cell, it's much simpler to understand even the sequence of events after infarction, right? If you have liked this video, hit the like button. If you have any queries to ask, please do comment and then don't forget to subscribe if you find this video useful and do share with your friends so that it might be useful for them as well. Thank you.